Hi everyone, welcome back to the series called Finance Current Affairs. In this very series, we pick up some important financial topics and we try and discuss them with the help of different questions. So before I start with first question, if you have not yet subscribed, please do subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so that you can be updated about all our upcoming videos. Many of you asked for the free PDFs of these very sessions. So please join our Telegram group, link is in the description below. All the free material, the free PDFs are provided on that very group only. Now let's start with first question. That says identify the correct statements. So here are a few statements that relate to the SWIFT payment system. So uh, I'll be discussing that what is this SWIFT and you all would be aware about the Russia Ukraine thing that is going on because of which it is being said that Russia in fact not it's not just said but it has been implemented that some of the banks of Russia are excluded from this payment system so US or European Union ne swift payment system ko uh, Russia mein kuch banks se exclude kar diya gaya hai so why this step has been taken what is this swift what is swift how it works and what kind of impact are we going to see because of the exclusion of some Russian banks from this very mechanism or this very payment system? How is it going to impact Russia and what will be its impact on India? We are going to discuss all those things in today's session. So, first we will discuss about it and then we question pe aake hum log isko answer the question. Now, talking about this, what is the news? The news is that the Ukraine crisis has forced US and European Union to exclude some Russian banks. See, only some Russian banks have been excluded as of now, not all from the SWIFT payment system. So US or European Union ne Russia ki kuch banks ko exclude kar diya hai SWIFT payment system use karne se. How this system works, I'll be discussing about all that in next slide. Abhi mein aapko ye news piece de rahi hu ki kuch Russian banks ab is system ko use nahi kar paayenge. The US announced sanctions on some Russian banks while EU has not yet named the list of Russian banks. So US ne to name kar diya ki ye ye banks ko hum exclude kar rahe hai swift payment system se. European Union has not named those banks. So the Russian banks will be excluded from swift payment system as far as EU is concerned. They have not named those banks as of now. So why they have not named the banks? Why is there a partial exclusion as of now? This will also be discussed further. So this is also going to impact Russia from accessing its reserves. So EU or US to hai, ab wo sab banks Russia mein hai, unki branches se Russia mein operate kar rahi hai. Or Russia is having some of its deposits with the banks in US or EU. So they won't be able to use their own reserves. Ab jo Russia hai, unki, for, unki jo international reserves, jo foreign exchange reserves, they can be in the form of gold, they can be in the form of other foreign currency assets. So their holdings elsewhere, they won't be able to access that as well. Now talking about SWIFT, how does it work? Let's take a very simple example. Suppose I want to transfer money to someone else. Uh, suppose I want to transfer money to your account. Because both of us are in India, both of our accounts are in India, we can use some platform like UPI to transfer the money. But think of a situation when some international transaction is involved. Suppose I am uh, doing a job in US and I want to send money to my parents in India. So my account is say with Bank of America in US and my parents have an account with SBI in India. Now when we have to make such cross border transactions, the simple system of easily transferring the money through the normal mechanisms we use in India is not allowed. There is a need of some kind of a system where which is going to help in sending the financial messages among these institutions. So if I want to send money to my parents in India, my bank in US is going to send a mess message to my parents bank in India that okay, this much account, uh, this much amount is going to get deducted from here and will be transferred over there. So this system which allows sending these messages is SWIFT. Keep this in mind, SWIFT is not uh, facilitating the movement of money. It is acting as an intermediary to send the message which approves such transactions. So, here SWIFT is system that transfer money in both. 
बट ये एक फाइनेंशियल मैसेजिंग सिस्टम है जैसे हम व्हाट्सएप पे किसी को मैसेज करते हैं और वी डू एन एसएमएस सिमिलरली स्विफ्ट इज अ सिस्टम व्हिच सेंड्स फाइनेंशियल मैसेजेस अमंग डिफरेंट एंटिटीज इन डिफरेंट कंट्रीज सो ये अलग-अलग फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशंस को अलग-अलग बैंक्स को जो डिफरेंट कंट्रीज में लोकेटेड हैं उन्हें कनेक्ट करता है और फाइनेंशियल मैसेजेस भेजता है जो ये सारी पेमेंट्स फैसिलिटेट करते हैं so as i have given the example suppose a person wants to send money to some other person who is in another country he will need a swift code ek code assigned hoga us bank account mein us bank ka and that code will is associated with that person so you need to provide the account details of that person and the swift code to your bank so matlab agar main us mein hu to mujhe apne parents ke bank account details and swift code jo hai wo apne us ke bank ko dena hoga and our us bank is going to send message to sbi in india that okay this much money is to be transferred uh, so the tra- transaction will also involve conversion of the currency and all so that message that okay this much money will be transferred will be sent through swift and once whole approval is given then the money will be deducted from bank of america's account of uh, the person like in this case me and it will get added to my parents account which is there in sbi india so ye jo message ja raha hai america ke bank se india ke bank ko wo messaging system jo hai wo swift hai the full form of swift is society for worldwide interbank financial telecommunication so communicate karna hai koi financial transaction hona hai wo communication facilitate karta hai swift it's a secure platform for financial institutions to exchange information about global monetary transactions like that of transferring the money so as i have mentioned it does not involve movement of money movement nahi ho rahi hai money ki बट एक तरह से वेरिफिकेशन मैसेजेस जा रहे हैं ताकि मूवमेंट फैसिलिटेट हो सके बाय प्रोवाइडिंग सिक्योर फाइनेंशियल मैसेजिंग सर्विसेज टू 11000 बैंक्स एंड 200 कंट्रीज दिस स्विफ्ट मैकेनिज्म इज रियली वेरी हेल्पफुल सो इट इज ओवरसीन बाय सेंट्रल बैंक्स ऑफ वेरियस कंट्रीज एंड इट इज बेस्ड इन बेल्जियम सो हेड क्वार्टर्स बेल्जियम में है और बाकी कंट्रीज के बैंक्स लाइक दैट ऑफ कनाडा फ्रांस जर्मनी इटली जापान नीदरलैंड्स स्विट्जरलैंड स्वीडन यूके यूएस ये सब इसको ओवरसी करते हैं दैट्स व्हाई यूएस एंड यूरोपियन यूनियन आर एक्सक्लूडिंग सर्टेन बैंक्स फ्रॉम यूजिंग द स्विफ्ट इन रशिया इंडिया आल्सो हैज द एक्सेस टू द स्विफ्ट मैकेनिज्म ऑल राइट अब हम बात करते हैं क्यों ऐसा स्टेप लिया जा रहा है सो यू वुड बी क्लियर दैट बिकॉज सच काइंड ऑफ अ थिंग इज गोइंग ऑन वेयर रशिया इज इनवेडिंग यूक्रेन सो वी नीड टू बेसिकली पनिश देम फॉर दिस काइंड ऑफ अ डूइंग और basically um give them and uh, uh, basically tell them not to take such step back off otherwise more measures will be taken so unko ek tarah se aap ye dhamki de rahe ho ki aapke against hum steps lenge agar aap back off nahi karoge so ek mechanism hai unhe um रोकने का ये स्टेप लेने से कि उनके ट्रांजैक्शंस को आप हैम्पर कर दो फाइनेंशियल पेमेंट्स नहीं हो पाएंगे बिकॉज स्विफ्ट सिस्टम विल नॉट बी अलाउड इट विल इम्पैक्ट इट्स ट्रेड सो रशिया शुड बैक ऑफ अदरवाइज इट्स ग्रोथ विल बी इम्पैक्टेड इट्स ट्रेड विल बी इम्पैक्टेड सो यू आर डूइंग ऑल दिस थिंग और यू एस एंड यूरोपियन यूनियन इज डूइंग ऑल दिस थिंग दीज थिंग्स टू बेसिकली मेक श्योर दैट रशिया बैक ऑफ फ्रॉम दिस वेरी स्टेप so uh, in response to russia invading ukraine us and european union have imposed these restrictions taki unki economy cripple ho sake unke banking institutions impact ho and they will ultimately back off so it's going to impact russia's trade it will impact their growth and the basic intention is to isolate russia from international financial system if you are isolating russia from financial system it will impact its payments its exports its imports its growth so it might back off the crucial role of swift can be gauged from one example ab ye koi choti moti cheez nahi hai ki swift pe ban lag jaye ek ye bahut bada step hai एंड इसका एक बहुत मेजर एग्जाम्पल है जो ये बताता है कि स्विफ्ट के बैन होने से उस कंट्री पे कितना मेजर इम्पैक्ट पड़ा एंड दैट इज द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ ईरानियन बैंक सो वेन ईरान वॉज बैंड फ्रॉम यूजिंग द स्विफ्ट इट्स एक्सपोर्ट्स फेल शार्पली अबाउट थ्री मिलियन बैरल्स डे इन ट्वेंटी इलेवन टू अबाउट वन मिलियन बैरल्स अ फ्यू ईयर्स लेटर सो इफ रशिया इज ऑल्सो डूइंग दिस थिंग एज ऑफ नाउ सम पार्शियल एक्सक्लूजन हैज बीन डन वेन कंप्लीट बैन विल बी इम्पोज दे वोट बी एबल टू डू ट्रेड विद द वर्ल्ड और 
they might uh, come up with some alternative options but it will absolutely affect their ability to trade kyunki swift jo hai wo worldwide bahut sare banks use kar rahe hain so that's why this step is being taken now talking a bit more about this so the move against russia is only partly implemented why ab har russian bank pay step kyu nahi liya gaya abhi partial implementation kyu hua hai it's just a warning to russia to back off abhi unko warning di ja rahi hai ki hum kuch banks pe ban laga rahe hain agar aap abhi bhi nahi manoge then we might impose a full restriction as well so this is one thing ki ye abhi ke liye ek warning hai secondly if all the banks will be excluded in russia then it is going to impact other nations as well now if i talk about us around 14.7 billion of money is owed to american banks alone so russia ne bahut sara paisa dena hai america ko ya baaki countries ko if this kind of a ban is imposed they will all, although they are not able to make the payments they will also not be able to receive the payments from russia so they, from that uh, point there will be a problem secondly russian importers may default on paying on large scale now if russia is exporting something and you have to make the payment that will be impacted so russia's exports will be impacted but if you see the other side if you are uh, if russia is importing something from you agar russia kuch import kar raha hai european union se ya kuch um, import kar raha hai us se uske liye russia ne inko payments karni thi now those payments will also get impacted that's why some banks only on some banks the restrictions have been imposed so partial blocking is there not complete blocking but if russia still does not back off then they might have to think to implement it to other banks as well or impose more such kind of restrictions to create more problems for russia all right now talking about what happens if russia is excluded from swift so russia pe kya impact padne wala hai obviously its trade is going to get impacted if it is raising some foreign funding its foreign funding will be impacted its cross border payments will be affected wo cross border easily payments nahi kar payega when it's not able to make payments for the imports it's doing when it's not it will not be able to import such products which might be in demand in their country if it used to export something it will not be able to receive the payments and russia exports a lot of things so it will be a big blow to russia oil is one of the areas where russia is quite on a stronger footing as far as the exports are concerned so those will get impacted it will impact its ability to operate globally unke oil and gas ke exports hamper honge and those exports will be hampered because they are highly dependent on swift system russia jo hai wo apne natural resources ke trade ke liye swift pe bahut zyada dependent hai and when swift will be banned they will uh, that's going to impact their position globally russian central bank will also be targeted with measures to restrict its ability to use its international reserves russia ka central bank apni khud ki international reserves ka hi use nahi kar payega also russia would still be able to conduct banking operations but at a higher cost so russia ne iske alternatives nikale hain do alternatives ek russia ka apna payment system hai although wo smaller scale pe work kar raha hai but ek hai system secondly wo kai aur se payments route kar sakte hain but agar wo ye sab karenge to wo expensive hai okay so russia has a system own financial messaging system like there is swift but it is just uh, limited to only 400 institutions and few foreign firms so ye bahut bada network nahi hai it's a limited financial messaging system secondly russia could route its payments through those countries where these curbs are not imposed like that of china but if it's taking all these steps it will be more expensive for russia so it uh, still wants swift it is highly dependent on swift all right so now talking about its impact on india agar ye exclude ho rahe hain russian bank swift system se to iska india mein kya major impact padega see if russia is not able to import it's not able to export now there might be some payments which are to be made or uh, for importing certain raw material to make the products and those products are then exported by russia so all that will that will be impacted when all that is impacted whatever products are been exported from russia then they will be impacted so india jo hai wo russia se arms ka import karta hai so we might face a delay and interruption in importing all those things secondly as far as the payments are concerned that won't be majorly impacted why because india makes most of the payments in rupee ab india crude oil petroleum coal fertilizers kafi cheeze import karta hai india aur russia ke beech in sab cheezon ka kafi trade chalta hai and india is either making the payments in rupee or at times in euro for both exports and imports so these curves might not impact india's payments to that extent but obviously jo imports hain wo delay ho sakte hain because of the war kind of a thing which is going on over there 
more over this geopolitical crisis which is going on which it can create troubles for india if some kind of thing is happening with one country and each country has tie ups with other country it is going to have a uh, impact on those nations as well ab kahin na kahin nations kisi na kisi way mein connected hai export import ke through connected hai ya kisi aur mechanism ke through connected hai so if the problems are there in uh, say russia and we are importing certain things we are not able to get those things the prices will rise so oil food prices they are going to rise we are likely to see more inflation our current account will be impacted our fiscal balances will be impacted which will impact the economic growth so ye sare impact hame india mein dekhne ko mil sakte hain india jaisi country mein jahan abhi hum dekh rahe hain poor inflation already itni high hai so ye sab cheezon ke impact aur honge aur inflation aur badh sakti hai all right so this was all about this discussion now coming back to our question we have to identify the correct statement so pehli statement hai swift stands for society for worldwide Interna- interbank financial telecommunication this is correct it's a secure platform for financial institutions to exchange information about global monetary transactions yes so ye ek exchange karne ka information platform hai third swift involves actual movement of money ye to maine pehle hi clear kiya money ki movement nahi hai ek bank se dusre bank mein dusre nation mein is just the exchange of information so third is incorrect correct statements are first and second so answer is option c now coming to next topic and next question of the day so it says which of the following is incorrect recently sebi ka ek consultation paper aaya hai which relates to commodity derivatives contracts so this question is related to that let's first discuss that news piece then we'll come back to the question and answer this so sebi ne ek uh, proposal laya hai that foreign portfolio investors should be allowed to participate in this commodity derivatives market so commodity derivatives jo instrument hai isme foreign portfolio investors ko bhi participate karne ka allow kar diya jaye ye proposal abhi sebi ne rakha hai and the comments are invited on this consultation paper So the question arises: What is a commodity derivatives market? Commodity derivatives market is that is that market where these commodity derivatives are dealt with. So next question arises: What is a commodity derivative? To understand commodity derivative, we must first know what is a derivative. Derivative पे तो हम लोग काफी sessions ले चुके हैं and we know that derivatives are such financial contracts whose value is dependent on some underlying asset. Now that underlying asset can be a currency, it can be a commodity, it can be a security. so when the underlying commodity uh, when the underlying asset is a commodity then we call it a commodity derivative so jab ek derivative contract hai where we are agreeing to buy or sell a particular asset at some future date at a price agreed to the future option of a futures contract or a forwards contract where the underlying asset is a commodity ab wo commodity agriculture commodity ho sakti hai koi non agriculture commodity bhi ho sakti hai so jab underlying asset koi agriculture ya non agriculture commodity hai then such a derivative contract is a commodity derivative ab agriculture commodities mein aa jati hain aapki perishable commodities like soybean cotton chana maize or some processed commodities like soybean oil palm oil and all and as far as the non agriculture commodities are concerned we can have some bullions and gems silver ho gaya gold ho gaya precious gems ho gaya like diamond or we can have some other metal commodities which are not precious like copper brass iron so ye sari commodity ke jab hum contracts agree kar rahe hain ki is asset ko hum future pe is price pe kharidenge jo hum aaj agree kar rahe hain that is a commodity derivative it can also include energy commodities like crude oil natural gas and all so jahan underlying asset ye commodities hain wo commodity derivative contract hai and sebi has proposed that fti should be allowed to trade in all non agriculture commodities and some agriculture commodities to begin with so abhi ke liye ye proposal hai ki sare non agriculture commodities mein foreign portfolio investors ko deal karne diya jaye par jahan tak agriculture commodities ki baat aati hai to abhi kuch broad categories select ki gayi hain now talking about why sebi wants to initiate this step sebi kyun chahta hai ki fpis jo hai wo is instrument mein invest kar sake one reason is to provide more liquidity to this very market इसमें और ज्यादा डीलिंग्स हो वेन दे विल बी मोर लिक्विडिटी इंडिया कैन बिकम अ प्राइस सेटर फॉर दिस काइंड ऑफ अ प्रोडक्ट अदर देन बीइंग अ प्राइस टेकर एंड व्हेन देयर इज मोर पार्टिसिपेशन मोर इकोनॉमीज ऑफ स्केल द ट्रांजैक्शन कॉस्ट्स आर लाइकली टू रिड्यूस सो पहला मेजर रीजन है इस मार्केट इंस्ट्रूमेंट की और लिक्विडिटी बढ़ाना और इसकी डीलिंग्स इंश्योर करना सेकंड मेजर रीजन इज दैट एज ऑफ नाउ देयर आर सर्टेन फॉरेन एंटिटीज व्हिच आर अलाउड टू डू अ investment in this very instrument 
but the condition is that those entities should have actual exposure in the commodities market in india so they are called eligible foreign entities kuch aisi foreign entities hain jinki actually physical commodities hain india mein wo hi is instrument mein deal kar sakte hain abhi ka rule ye hai but sebi has proposed uh, allowing this for fpis as well because the foreign entities which are the eligible foreign entities as of now they are not using this plat this instrument much because of lot of norms which are there so jinko allowed hai isme invest karna wo entities invest nahi kar rahe because there are lot of norms so that's why sebi is suggesting that let uh, fpis invest over here so that we can get more liquidity in this very market so jinko ye open hai wo is product का यूज नहीं कर रहे हैं इस मार्केट इस इंस्ट्रूमेंट में लिक्विडिटी नहीं है जिस वजह से एफपीआई का रूट अलाउ किया जाने का प्रपोजल है टेलिंग यू अट मोर अबाउट दिस इट इज ऑल्सो प्रपोज दैट दी दीज ई एफ ईज दैट इज योर एलिजिबल फॉरन एंटिटीज शुड बी डिसकंटिन्यूड द नॉर्म्स विच आर देयर फॉर देम शुड बी डिसकंटिन्यूड एंड फॉरन इन्वेस्टर्स कैन पार्टिसिपेट इन दिस थ्रू एफ पी आई रूट सो ये लोग भी अब एफ पी आई रूट्स का यूज करके इन्वेस्ट कर सके जो इनके लिए मुश्किल से नॉर्म्स बने हुए हैं उनको डिसकंटिन्यू किया जाए दैट्स द प्रपोजल सो से बी फेयर दैट द प्री कंडीशन लाइक हैविंग एक्चुअल फिजिकल एक्सपोजर इन दीज कमोडिटीज शुड बी डिस्पेंस सो दैट इट बिकम्स इजियर टू इन्वेस्ट इन दिस वेरी इंस्ट्रूमेंट सो दोज हु आर एलिजिबल टू बी रजिस्टर एज एफ पी आई दे कैन मेक इन्वेस्टमेंट ओवर हेयर एंड इट्स नॉट दैट दे विल बी नो रूल्स एट ऑल कहीं पर भी अगर रूल्स नहीं होंगे तो ऑब्वियसली ट्रांसपेरेंसी नहीं रहेगी प्रॉब्लम्स क्रिएट होंगी सो इन्वेस्टमेंट लिमिट्स मार्जिन रिक्वायरमेंट्स रिस्क मैनेजमेंट मेजर्स ऑल ऑफ देम आर प्रपोज फॉर एफ पी आई एज वेल हु वॉन्ट टू पार्टिसिपेट इन दिस एक्सचेंज ट्रेडेड कमोडिटी डेरेवेटिव सो इट इज सजेस्टेड दैट द काइंड ऑफ नॉर्म्स विच आर एप्लीकेबल टू म्यूचुअल फंड टू ऑल ऑल्टरनेटिव इन्वेस्टमेंट फंड दे शुड बी इम्प्लीमेंटेड टू दिस कमोडिटी डेरेवेटिव एज वेल सो ट्वेंटी फोर्थ मार्च तक अभी कमेंट्स इन्वाइटेड है एंड देन द फाइनल डिसीजन विल बी टेकन coming back to the question now identifying the incorrect statement so pehli statement hai ki a derivative contract which as a commodity as its underlying asset is a commodity derivative bahut simple statement hai correct commodity derivative can include agriculture or non agriculture commodities abhi hi humne discuss kiya foreign entities having actual exposure to indian commodity markets known as eligible foreign entities are allowed to participate as of now in this commodity derivatives market so ye correct hai abhi tak eligible foreign entities allowed hai so all of them are correct none of them is incorrect so answer is option e now coming to next question that says who is the first woman to head sebi and has thus been appointed as the sebi chairperson so recently he sebi ki new head appoint hui hai she is the first woman who is going to head sebi as its chairperson so who is she the answer to this question is option a that she is madhavi puri buj so talking a bit about her she was the whole time director at sebi and has now been appointed as its new chairperson so unko already a former sebi whole time director ka experience hai aur ab wo pehli woman bani hai jo sebi ko chair karne wali hai who was the chairperson prior to her it was chief ajay tyagi so she has now been appointed for a period of 3 years after mr ajay tyagi completed his tenure with some extension now talking a bit about her experience so she has the experience in financial markets she has the experience of working as a whole time director with sebi aur jab wo whole time director thi sebi mein uh, she has handled various portfolios such as surveillance collective investment schemes investment management iske alawa unhone icici bank ke board mein bhi अपना पार्टिसिपेशन दिखाया है शी वॉज द एम डी एन सी ई ओ एट आई सी आई सी आई सिक्योरिटीज एग्जीक्यूटिव डायरेक्टर एट आई सी आई सी आई बैंक शी हैज ऑल्सो वर्क विद न्यू डेवलपमेंट बैंक एंड नाउ शी हैज बीन अपॉइंटेड एट अ टाइम वेन देर इज अ लॉट ऑफ प्रॉब्लम गोइंग ऑन विद एन एस सी एंड द रोल ऑफ से बी एज अ रेगुलेटरी बॉडी सो एन एस सी का को लोकेशन स्कैंडल चल रहा है देन चित्रा रामाकृष्णा इशू इज अराइजिंग दैट शी हैज शेयर द इन्फॉर्मेशन विद सम हिमालयन योगी वी हैव ऑलरेडी टेकन अ सेशन ऑन दैट सो इन सब चीज़ों की जब बात करें एंड देन द क्वेश्चन आर ऑल्सो अरोज दैट से बी हैज नॉट टेकन अ प्रॉपर डिसीजन बाय जस्ट इम्पोजिंग द पेनल्टी एंड नॉट डिस्कलोजिंग द ट्रू आइडेंटिटी ऑफ द हिमालयन योगी एंड हिज इंटर कनेक्शन विद सुब्रमण्यन सो 
I mean, amid all those issues, she has been appointed as a chairperson, and she might help with better functioning of SEBI as far as this very case is concerned, because she has already um, brought into light the fraudulent insider trading cases going on. So, उन्होंने पहले भी ऐसे insider trading cases जो हुए हैं, उनको limelight में लाया है, and she might help in resolving this case as well. Okay, now coming to last question. It says the Union Cabinet, chaired by, chaired by Prime Minister Mr. Narendra Modi, has cleared an amendment to FDI policy to allow FDI up to dash percent under dash rate in LIC. So LIC ka IPO aane wala hai. Iske aane se pehle Union Cabinet ne ek amendment laya hai FDI policy mein, and that relates to the uh, investment in LIC. So we have to identify that. How much FDI is allowed in LIC and under which rate? So let me tell you the answer first, then we'll discuss about it. The answer is option D. Twenty percent FDI is allowed under automatic route. Okay, so let's discuss a bit about this very news piece. Union cabinet ne ye decision liya hai ki foreign direct investment policy mein ek amendment kiya jayega and as per that, the foreign direct investors can invest up to twenty percent through automatic route in LIC. So one is a government route, other is automatic route. Under government route, if some foreign investors investor wants to do an FDI in India, he needs the approval from government. But under automatic route, that tedious procedure of getting government approval is not needed. Okay. So automatic route ke under ye allowed kiya gaya hai ki 20% tak FDI LIC mein kar sakte hain foreign investors. Now this decision is going to open doors for foreign investors to invest in IP of LIC. नेक्स्ट मंथ एल आई सी के आई पी ओ आने के चांसेस हैं सो फॉरन इन्वेस्टर्स एल आई सी में इन्वेस्ट करना चाहेंगे वेन देल इन्वेस्ट इन एल आई सी देल गेट सम स्टेक इन एल आई सी सो देर वॉज अ नीड टू मेक सम चेंजेस दैट एक्चुअली फॉरन इन्वेस्टर्स कैन इन्वेस्ट इन एल आई सी दैट्स वाई दिस अमेंडमेंट हैज कम ओके वेन दे विल गो दे आर गोइंग टू एक्वायर सम स्टेक इन एल आई सी इट्स नीडेड दैट द परमिशन आर देयर दैट फॉरन इन्वेस्टर कैन एक्चुअली इन्वेस्ट इन एल आई सी अदर माइनर इन Enhancements have also been made in FDI policy. Now, FDI policy me all the rules regulations ko ease kiya gaya hai. They have been updated. They have been made more easy so that more foreign investments are attracted to India. Thodi policies uh, related jo abhi norms hai unko aur ease kiya jayega to ease of doing business improve hogi aur foreign flows aayenge India me jo India ki growth, income, employment me contribute karenge. Now, why this step has been taken? See, we have. FDI limits for different sectors. Okay, but if I talk about this insurance sector, seventy-four percent FDI through automatic route is allowed, but it is not allowed for LIC. LIC ko exception rakha gaya hai because it's a statutory corporation which is under a different statute, LIC Act. So LIC ke alawa baaki insurance sector me agar koi foreign direct investment karna chahta hai, so seventy-four percent tak FDI automatic route ke through allowed hai. LIC is a statutory corporation. It's not considered a insurance company or intermediary under this FDI rule. So there is no limit for foreign investment in LIC. And now uh, the LIC Act, which is not having any provision for foreign investment, needs to be aligned so that it's easy to come up with an LIC's IPO adhering with the FDI norms as well. So that's why this step has been suggested or has been implemented. Now, second question that arises is why twenty percent and why automatic route? So, twenty percent FDI ki limit is this set ki gayi hai because usually for all public sector banks, twenty percent through government approval route is the present limit. But instead of keeping it as a government route, the automatic route has been allowed because it's applicable to insurance sector and it will attract more FDIs. So, insurance sector me automatic route chalta hai. Ek ye reason hai ki LIC me bhi automatic route allow kiya gaya. Moreover, if government route will be applied, then there will be a lot of restrictions. Government approval will be needed, more tedious procedure, which will lead to less investments coming in LIC. So, easy process रखने के लिए automatic route allow किया गया है. All right. So this was all about this very uh, session. With this, I would like to end up this session. I hope it was useful. Thank you so much.